Hey, watch lovers, Brad from Brent Miller, back with you today with another this or that. Uh, I enjoy having just quick comparisons uh, amongst watches, and you know, these two, let's just get out of the way, are certainly in different price points, different price categories. You know, the Omega uh, Plot Prof here is three times as much as the, uh, the Tudor uh, P01 I have on my left. However, I still think they're both uh, unique, not watches you see every day. Um, and I just thought it'd be fun to do a, a very quick comparison between the two and, and ask you, you know, obviously, you know, price is a, is a huge thing when you're looking at the, your next watch purchase, but price aside on these two, which one do you like aesthetically? Um, which one would you prefer and which one would you rather wear? Um, so without that, uh, without further ado, uh, I'm going to go over just some very quick specs. Uh, I'll throw these on and uh, kind of give you a look on my six and three quarter inch wrist. Listen, both of these are, 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 are large, watches larger than I would probably comfortably wear, uh, but still give you a little bit of a perspective. I, I get that uh, not everybody has a sub seven inch wrist out there. So um, working with what I got, but the Tudor uh, stainless steel case, uh, we do have a date here at three o'clock and overall uh, we are looking at a 42.2 millimeter case uh, about 55, 55.3 is what I measured lug to lug. Uh, you do have drilled lug holes here. Uh, we have 200 meters of water resistance, and you do have the Tudor uh, in-house MT5612 movement with a 70-hour power reserve. Um, I think what did I leave out there? 14.6 millimeters thick on this model as well. So just the quick specs on it. You know, overall, really, I, I think I love the design. I love that the date window is not a pure white. It matches the uh, hour indices, I think, quite well. And overall, I, I do. I like the design of this watch. I, I think it looks great. I, I'm okay with the crown position. We have a, a signed screw-down crown here with the Tudor shield uh, at the 4 o'clock position. Um, and the way the bezel action on this works is you actually push down uh, at the top of this. If I can get this done with gloves on. That folds down. And if you're not familiar, this is the, the, the P1, the P01, it's the prototype P01. Uh, I won't go into great detail on this review, um, the history of it. Uh, certainly, you could find it with a quick search. But uh, bezel, uh, once this is depressed down, is bidirectional. And then you just fold that back down. So there's the Tudor P01. The, the brown, uh, it's kind of like a, a leather uh, hybrid strap, rubber, rubberized underneath. Um, really comfortable. I like the brown. I think it looks great. The deployment clasp is nice. Um, so overall, I, I do like the, the look of this watch. I think it looks good. Next up, we have the Omega Plaprof. And with this one, uh, we certainly have... A little bit larger case here, dimensions with the uh, the crown protector here, the way this screws. So the way this works is you actually unscrew this. Um, if you're left hand, you got to get used to that if you're always doing it with your right. And then the whole piece just pulls out. Um, so once it's unscrewed, you can kind of see the, the whole piece of this just pulls out like a normal crown. Push it back in and uh, screw it back down. So dimensions on this, 58, or I'm sorry, 54.8. So 54.8 by 48. Um, so 54.8 across, 48 from top to the bottom of the uh, the kind of the monoblock style case. Um, obviously, we have a ceramic bezel on this. The hour hand is uh, the fantastic. I'm not getting the metallic to come out on it, but uh, it really does pop. I like the orange. And uh, overall, it looks good against the black dial. The, well, the way this bezel works is you depress here. And this allows you to, again, turn bi-directional. When that's up, bezel is locked. Similar to when that's down, bezel is locked. So uh, we have an all titanium case and bracelet. Um, nice large clasp here with the, the hippocampus on it, signed clasp. Um, you do have the quick adjust um, just by pushing in here. You can pop out the bracelet, slides right out. So again, while very different, um, both of these obviously, you know, dive bezels, uh, lockdown crowns, I uh, thought they were somewhat similar to do a quick comparison. Uh, I didn't finish giving you the dimensions on this. This guy is 18.8 millimeters thick. If this was stainless steel, I, I can't imagine how heavy it would be. Um, so 18.8 millimeters thick, um, 1,200 meters water resistance. Uh, obviously, that's why it's going to be a lot thicker than your 200 here on your Tudor. 
Uh, and then this is the Omega Caliber 8912. We have 60 hours of power reserve. We have an exhibition case back on a 1200 meter diver. Um, so not something you probably see every day, but uh, if you'd like to see your movements, uh, pretty cool nonetheless. So Again, I rambled on long enough. I'll give you guys quick wrist shots of both of these. Again, six and three quarter inch wrist. Um, I'm sure it's going to dwarf my wrist here, um, but nonetheless, get a quick idea of how they look. And then we'll do a quick loom shot and wrap this up. Again, the titanium, actually, it does not feel awful. I mean, granted, it's, a, it's a quite a large watch. Um, the titanium makes it a lot more wearable than, uh, than what you may, uh, they may think if you haven't tried one on. And the two, Tudor P01. Again, we have a pretty long lug-to-lug -lug of 55, so on my wrist, this is definitely going to stick out. It's not fitted there. Quick wrist or uh, quick loom shots. We got the Omega. Sorry, upside down. My apologies. And the Tudor. As always, thanks for watching. I appreciate the support. If there's anything I can do for you, feel free to email me, brad at brentlmiller.com. I'll see everybody in the next video.